Well, good evening. We'll make a start. Uh, it's good to see all who've gathered here this evening for our midweek prayer meeting and Bible study. We'll be, of course, down in numbers for a little while as the youth challenge is going on, but we trust that others will join us a little later. We're going to commence tonight. We're going to sing our opening praise. That is the hymn 21 in the hymn book. The words will be on the screen. Awake, my soul, and with the sun, thy daily stage of duty run. Shake off dull sloth and joyful rise to pay thy morning sacrifice. And I have a confession to make. I picked two hymns that I haven't sang myself before, but I'm trying to learn some new tunes as well. So I trust that as we sing it, you'll help me along with it. We'll sing it and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We'll stand after we get our introduction, please. Come now and seek the Lord in prayer as we commence our service here tonight. Uh, let's pray. Our gracious God and our eternal Father in heaven, we humbly and bow in thy presence this evening. Lord, we're very thankful for the ability to come to thee, the access that we have even through the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. 
We thank thee for the ability to sing thy praises this evening. We thank thee for that wonderful hymn that we've been singing, even this evening, of praise and of honor unto the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And Lord, we thank thee for the ability to be here tonight, to have the open door in this church in Balamoni for the, the Bible study, for the prayer meeting, Lord. And oh Lord, we do rejoice tonight that we can come and we can come as a band of believers to pray, to approach the throne of grace, to lay our burdens one upon another and to pray, Lord, in spirit and in truth and to worship thee in that way also, Lord. We do ask that you will just bless this meeting tonight. We thank thee, Lord, for it. We thank thee for the place of prayer, Lord. Oh Lord, when there's not, nothing else that we can do as believers, we can still pray. And we thank thee, Lord, for that ability tonight. We do pray and ask that you will just take control of all aspects of this meeting. We pray, Lord, in a little while as we would read the Word of God that will bless it to your hearts, that you'll encourage us in our own souls this evening as we open the Word of God, as we open the living Word, the true Word, the Word that has so much to teach each and every one of us. And, Lord, we pray that it will be a blessing to your hearts as we uplift the Saviour. We do pray also for the, uh, the preaching of thy Word tonight. We pray for the study again in the book of Leviticus. We thank thee for uh, what we learnt last week. Lord, we thank thee for the the practical applications that we can put toward our worship. And as we come again tonight, Lord, to take up that theme, Lord, may it be a blessing to our hearts and our souls. May it stir us up, Lord, even to worship Thee aright. May it stir us up, Lord, to worship Thee in ways, perhaps, Lord, that uh, we haven't before. We do ask that You will just bless all things. We think tonight also of the Youth Challenge. We thank you for it. As it's going on now, Lord, we pray for our sister Christina, she is uh, no doubt giving the Bible lesson to the kids. Lord, we thank also for Brother Noel as well with the seniors. Lord, we pray that you'll bless that work. May it be fruitful. May we hear, Lord, even tonight after this prayer meeting of some dear boy or girl putting their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. We do think of it and we thank thee for all who have helped out in it. Lord, we thank thee that uh, it has been a success, Lord, because thou has been in it. And we pray, Lord, even for the final night tomorrow night that it will be a special night, Lord. There will be a night where we even see new boys and girls coming in, Lord, people who maybe haven't been in this week, Lord. And we pray, Lord, above all, that Christ will be seen, that Christ will be glorified, and what these kids learn, Lord, will live in their hearts for eternity, Lord, and that souls will be saved through it, Lord. We do pray also for the outreach in, on Sunday, Lord, we think of the Open Our Witness. We thank you for the ability to go into the community, to witness, to to preach the gospel in Balamoni, Lord. We pray for this town. We thank thee, Lord, for the liberty to preach the gospel. We pray, Lord, that that will always be our freedom. We do ask, Lord, that even through that open our witness, Lord, the people of this community would realize there's a church that preaches Christ, a church that is here, that is open, that is welcome, Lord, to receive in new people, new faces, Lord. We do ask also even for the the, the planned mission, Lord, we think of that in September, that you will bless it, Lord, that you will prepare hearts, that even prepare the ground now, Lord, for the seed to fall upon it. I pray, Lord, that we as, as believers, Lord, will do our bit, that we will even just um, give out the invitations, Lord, we will tell people through word of mouth, Lord, even as well, of the planned mission that's coming up, Lord, and even through that will souls be saved in Balamoni. Lord, bless us here tonight. We thank thee, Lord, tonight for a congregation here. We thank thee for a people, Lord, who love the Lord, who love the place of prayer. And we pray even tonight, Lord, you'll bless each and every one of their hearts and souls this evening. We pray also for those perhaps who can't be here tonight, those sick, those at home, Lord, even through infirmity, through old age, that you would come alongside them, Lord, that you would draw graciously near at this time. And Lord, even through the online means, may they be able to worship thee aright, Lord. We do ask, Lord, that you will just continue to bless the work here. Continue, Lord, to build it up. Thank of our minister. We thank thee for him. Pray for the Reverend Park, Lord, that you will just make his fruitful, his ministry here fruitful, Lord, that he will see souls saved, even, Lord, uh, this Sunday. Lord, prepare his, hearts, his heart for the message that he would deliver on Sunday. Pray even for the, the parents' evening on Sunday night also. That you'll bring in the, the parents of the boys and girls who have been here this week, Lord. That they'll come in, Lord, that they'll hear words by way they may be saved. Lord, that they will even do all things for thy honor and for thy glory. So, Lord, just be with us now. Give us help, Lord. Lead us out with thee, Lord, and continue to abide with us. And may thy presence even be here, for it is thy presence that makes the feast. So, bless us now. Be with us. Continue on, even here tonight in Balamoni. For Jesus' sake, we pray those things. Amen. Well, again, could I just welcome you here tonight to the congregation, physically here in the building. And also those tonight who are tuning in through our online webcast, whether that be Sermon Audio, whether it be Facebook or YouTube, we do welcome you in the Saviour's name. Just a few announcements to make tonight. Uh, the Reverend Park, he is helping out with the Youth uh, Challenge. He'll be in shortly, he has assured me, and therefore he's happy enough for me just to do the announcements tonight. Just a few to make. 
So youth challenge, as we were praying about there, is this week. Tomorrow night is the last night. And there is, of course, the football camp, just to remind those, perhaps who maybe will come tomorrow at 2.30 to 5 p.m. Then it will be a time up here of food with the children. And then the meeting will be from 7 p.m. to 8.30, both the junior and the senior meeting. And then next Lord's Day, we commence the usual time of 8 a.m. with the early morning prayer meeting. 12 noon is our worship service. The Reverend Park, God willing, will be back to take up his studies there in the Meditations of Mark, a study in the Second Gospel. And again, as we were praying about, there will be open air witness at 3.30 p.m. This week, the venue is in Millbrook. And therefore, if you can come and you can be part of that, you'd be more than welcome. Uh, pray uh, even for that as well. Encourage the one who would bring God's word on that occasion. And then next Sunday night is Youth Challenge Parents Night. That's at 7 p.m. And the speaker that night will be Miss Christina Logan. Pray for her, even as she prepares to come to speak to the boys and girls and even uh, the mums and dads as well. And there will be, of course, that time of prayer, the usual time, half an hour before the evening service at 6.30 p.m. And just on that youth challenge, uh, it's for the ladies who would do the tea, if you could provide the usuals, the three-quarter loaf, please, of sandwiches, one and a half dozen buns, that would be greatly appreciated. And as always, we do thank thee for all that you do in that regard. And we pray that it will even just be blessed of the Lord. A Sunday school camp, it will be next Monday, Monday the 22nd to Wednesday the 24th. And just even if you could pray for that, uh, pray that uh, there will be many children, pray that the leader, for the leaders also, and pray for the evangelist, pray for the speaker, Mr. Robert McConnell, of course, no stranger to us here in Balamoney. Just another announcement, again, we were praying about it there, about the Platinum Jubilee Mission. It's going to be in Balamoney Town Hall, uh, the Lord's Day of the 11th of September through to the 25th of September. And as you see on the little leaflet here, the services will be at Sunday, 7 p.m., and in each night, Monday through Friday, to 8 p.m., and the evangelist will be our own minister, uh, the Reverend Parks. So be much in, pr much in prayer for that. Even, I'm sure there are some uh, invitations you could give out to your friends, to your work colleagues, and just really encourage people to come along and to hear the gospel as it's preached to that mission. Just leave the prayer request before you. Again, this is a familiar slide to us. Pray for Sister Maureen, a new name there, and Karis Parak as well, and for Peter, uh, for Jamie, for Nigel, for Mark, Mrs. Robinson, and pray just that the Lord would meet all of them at the point of their need. Whatever need they have may it be met in the Lord. Think also of David, of Rachel, the family, as they serve the Lord there in Uganda. I was speaking to David just yesterday. Uh, they're settling in. They're really enjoying there. They had their first Lord's Day service on Sunday. It is busy, of course, the four meetings on the Sunday, but he is enjoying it. And we're just praying that for them as a family, pray that the Lord would move in Uganda, that many souls would be saved, and many children as well be brought to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just one other announcement. It is a happy announcement, a happy occasion. Um, Vika has had her baby. A little photograph here, Mr. Park has told me to show you. Born yesterday, a little girl. I believe the little girl is called Emily. And both mum and little Emily are doing well, and they trust and hope that they will be home and back with us uh, very soon. And that's all the way of announcements tonight. We're going to open the Word of God, and we're going to continue tonight with our study in the book of Le Leviticus. So if you turn with me to Leviticus and to the chapter 1. Leviticus chapter 1. The chapter last week, let's just refresh in our minds. Leviticus chapter 1, please. Leviticus chapter 1, we'll begin to read at the verse number 1. And the Lord called unto Moses, and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a meal without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest Aaron's son shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. 
and he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into his pieces. And the sons of Aaron the priest shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. And the priest Aaron's son shall lay the parts, the head and the fat in order upon the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. But his inwards and his legs shall he wash in water. And the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. And if his offering be of the flocks, namely of the sheep or of the goats, for a burnt sacrifice he shall bring it a meal without blemish. And he shall kill it on the side of the altar northward before the Lord. And the priests, Aaron's sons, shall sprinkle his blood round about upon the altar. And he shall cut it into his pieces with his head and his fat. And the priest shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. But he shall wash the inwards and the legs with water. And the priest shall bring it all and burn it upon the altar. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire, a sweet savour unto the Lord. And if the burnt sacrifice for his offering to the Lord be of fowls, then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves or of young pigeons. And the priest shall bring it onto the altar and wring off his head and burn it on the altar. And the blood thereof shall be wrung out at the side of the altar. And he shall pluck away his crop with his feathers and cast it beside the altar on the east part by the place of the ashes. And he shall cleave it with the wings thereof, but shall not divide it asunder. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar, upon the wood that is upon the fire. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. Amen. We'll end the reading there at the end of chapter 1. Again, we trust the Lord will bless it even to your hearts for his name's sake. Just before we come to God's word again, just let's bow our heads for a moment, just momentarily, and ask the Lord again um, for his help tonight. Our Father in heaven, we do thank thee, Lord, for the, the gospel tonight. We thank thee for the word of God. We thank thee for this portion tonight in Leviticus. And we pray, Lord, even as we would consider again the burnt offering, we consider what it means for our worship tonight, that there be much for us to learn, that, Lord, there be much of Christ in what we speak about tonight, because Christ will be glorified, he will be central in this meeting. Lord, we pray that you will take away the attention from man today, take it away from ourselves. And, oh Lord, may we even look toward Christ tonight. May we approach him in our worship in that right way, worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Lord, we thank thee for the, uh, the preaching of the word. We thank thee, Lord, that we can... Uh, learn much from God's Word, and we pray tonight that that's what we would do, that we would learn from the Scriptures, that we would be uh, glorifying God in all of that as well. Uh, Lord, give me help tonight. Take away any nerves and any fears that I would have, and the uh, Lord, fill me with the Spirit of God, we ask of Thee. For Jesus' sake and for the honour for the glory of God, we pray those things. Amen. Well, last week, as I said, we began a little study in the sacrifices here in the opening chapters of the book of Leviticus. And we focus primarily on the first of these sacrifices, which is the burnt offering in Leviticus chapter 1. And from that burnt offering, we sought to bring out some truths, some practical applications with regard to our worship. And so tonight I want to continue with that study. There is much more that we can learn tonight even from that burnt offering. But just before we do that, as a way of an introduction, I think it will be good to give a little brief recap of what we did last week, just to refresh the mind, refresh the memories. It's been a busy week, and I'm sure... You know, we've all forgotten uh, much of it. And even for those perhaps who maybe weren't here last week, just to bring you up to speed so then you know where we are tonight. And so last week there were really were three main thoughts that we left with you. You'll see them on the screen. So the first thing that we looked at last week was that the burnt offering was an inclusive one. And therefore our worship, our approach to God, it should be inclusive also. And so we considered in that point the different animals, the various sacrifices that could be made whether it was the ox, whether it was the bullock, the, the ram, the goat, the, sh the sheep, the turtle dove, the pigeon, and how all of those were acceptable means of approaching God. See, all could approach God whether they were upper class, whether they were middle class or lower class, because they were to offer the best that they had. And that led us to consider our worship and how we all can approach the Lord through that one-time sacrifice, through the Lord Jesus Christ in whom these animals were pointing to. We thought about what the sacrifice was. We thought about how our worship is to be done with the right attitude, is to be done with the right heart, and how each of the animals that we looked at reminds us of Christ, reminds us of a various aspect with regard to Christ. 
You think tonight again of the strength of the, the service of the ox. You think of the meekness of the sheep, the poverty of the pigeon. Think of the innocence of the turtle dove. And that's an example for each of us to follow tonight as Christians. But we also looked in the second thought at God, He demanded the best sacrifice here. And therefore, He demands our best in worship as well. And we consider from that that worship is to be acceptable, how it was to be a meal, how it needed to be of a first year, how it had to be without spot and without blemish. And that again highlighted to us the details regarding Christ, because Christ, He truly is the sinless and the spotless Lamb of God. And we also notice from that that we, in our own sinfulness, we tonight, we have many blemishes, we have many spots, and therefore man is unable to save himself through his own efforts. And again, we applied that second thought principally to our worship. And we considered that we each have something to offer God in our worship. And that God, He deserves our best, He asks for our best, and He demands our best because nothing less than our best is acceptable to the Lord. And the third thing we looked at last week finally was this, that the sacrifice here in Leviticus chapter 1, namely in the verse 3 there, it was voluntary. And therefore our worship also is voluntary. You see, the one here who was bringing the offering, he did so on the voluntary basis. And we were made to consider again Christ. Remember, Leviticus is all about Christ. And Christ here, he freely offered himself as a sacrifice for sin. And again, we thought here about our hearts, thought about our attitude, we thought about our priorities in worship. We were reminded last week about the privilege that it is to be able to approach God in worship. We're all privileged to be here tonight. We're privileged to be able to come before the Lord in prayer. And the only true worship, only that worship that's done in the true heart, done in the right attitude, is going to be acceptable to God. And so really that's just a brief recap of last week, but I really want to get to what we're going to look at tonight. We're going to commence tonight part two of worshiping God through the burnt offering. Worshiping God through the burnt offering is going to be part two. And again, there'll be three things that I want to leave with you, three practical thoughts that we can apply with regard to your worship. And so the first thing we're going to consider tonight is this, is that God has appointed a way for the sacrifice to be offered. And therefore, we must worship God in his appointed way. And that's maybe a bit wordy. It's a bit more wordy than I'm used to. I like, usually like a nice alliterated, a nice succinct heading, but whenever we're given a contrast from something in the Old Testament and Leviticus, I, th I find explaining it, giving it a more fuller explanation will aid us in what we're trying to do. And in this first point tonight, this is going to be probably the majority of what we're going to speak about tonight, this first point about God's appointed way of worship. You see, Leviticus here, it speaks about how we are to approach worship. You see the sacrifice here. Because as they offered up that sacrifice unto God, they did it in a certain way. They approach God here in a certain manner, in a structured way, if you want to put it that way. Because it wasn't a case of the offer. He came and just decided, well, I'll do whatever I want tonight. We'll see how I feel. We'll offer it in whatever way I want. But you will see here that God appointed a way that was acceptable to him. Each animal, they had to be prepared. Each animal had to be offered in a certain way in order for it to be acceptable to God. And we can take tonight the example here of the bullock or of the ox from verse number three and onwards. Because in Leviticus 1 verse 3, it states that it was to be offered at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. In verse 4, the offer, he would have placed his hand upon the animal he was going to sacrifice. In verse 5, that, that offer, he would have had to kill the animal himself before the Lord. The priests would come, they would shed the blood round about upon the altar. In the verse 6 then, the burnt offering, we read it was flayed, it was skinned cut into pieces, the fire then was put upon the altar along with the wood. Verse 7 there, that was what happened there. Then in verse 8, we have Aaron's sons, they laid the different parts, the head, the inward, the fat upon the wood. Verse 9, the inwards, the legs were washed. And only after they'd done all of those things, only after they'd done each of those steps, was that burnt offering offered up. You see, what was the result of that procedure? What was the result of that structured approach to God? Will you read how verse 9 concludes there? Because it tells us in verse 9 that it was a sweet savor unto the Lord. And literally those words, a sweet savor, they simply mean it was a savor of rest. You see that in Ephesians chapter 5 and the verse 2, those words are used there. As you think there, you, you take your mind back to that place of sacrifice. You can imagine the smell of blood, the smell of burning flesh, and surely that would have been something very unpleasant. It would have been rotten, it would have been full of stench. 
And yet to the Lord here, it was called a sweet savor because it was a smell here of appeasement. It was a smell that symbolized the turning of God's wrath to God's favor. And you remember tonight what our focus in these studies is going to be on. Because Leviticus, it's all about Christ. And therefore, we must give some time tonight just to look at this approach and apply each of these steps to Christ and apply them to how we worship Christ, how we approach God in worship. See, the very fact here that the offering was made at the door of the tabernacle here in the verse 3, that teaches us that the one coming before God was unworthy. His approach in and of himself was unworthy. He had to come via the sacrifice here. And you, any time you and I come through the door of the church, any time we come into the place of worship, any time we even pray to God, we worship in that way, we too must realize in our own hearts that we are unworthy to approach upon our own merits. Because we can only approach God tonight through Christ, through that one-time sacrifice for sin. And you and I can, we can apply that further tonight as well, because we have come tonight, we've come through those doors. And you ask yourselves, how have you come tonight? How have you come through that door? Have you left everything at the door tonight? See, we are to come to worship. We are to leave our pride, our self-righteousness, all of our distractions, everything that takes our attention off the Lord tonight. That's to be left at the door before we worship. Because our sole focus tonight, it needs to be upon the Lord. That's why we're here tonight. We're here to worship the Lord. We're here to approach God. You think about verse 4 there. You think of the significance there in that verse. You see that offer, he placed the hand upon the head of the animal. What does that tell us? What does it symbolize? Well, it shows us here that the offer of that sacrifice, he was the guilty party. And through the transferring of the guilt here, through the placing of his hand upon the animal's head, he was transferring his guilt to that animal. And surely that reminds us tonight of how we are to be. Again, we must realize that Christ, he became a sacrifice for our sins wasn't his own sin. He was sinless. He was spotless. He never sinned. You and I, we were the guilty party. We were the offenders. And we must never forget this. Anytime we come to the Lord, as we approach him, we ought to remember the great privilege that we have in our approach. You notice also here in verse 4 that the transfer of that guilt, it was seen to be an atonement. You think of the word atonement, or what does it mean to atone? It simply means to cover something. It means to appease that thing. And again, Christ, you think of what he did on the cross. He offered up himself a sacrifice for sin. Christ made atonement on the cross. The wrath of God was poured out upon his son, and the wrath of God was satisfied. It was appeased. He made atonement. And therefore, we can approach God tonight because of the covering that Christ has given to us. We don't approach tonight upon our own merits, upon our own righteousness, but we approach tonight upon the righteousness of Christ, through the robe of righteousness that he has given to his own tonight. Verse 5, you think of how that bullock was killed. You think of the person who killed the bullock. It had to be the one offering it. And that shows us tonight that that one who offered the sacrifice, he realized that that sin, it was his own sin. It was nobody else's sin. Again, here it's an animal. But ultimately, is it not pointing forward to Christ? See, Christ, he died on the cross, not for his own sin. It was our sin. We were the guilty party. The blood was then shed around about, it, about the altar. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 9, without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. The blood was necessary to cleanse sin. You think of the skin there, the skin was removed, wasn't it? Why was that? Do you ever question that? You think of yourself, what happens whenever you remove a layer of skin? Maybe you're running about as a child, maybe even you're still doing it as an adult, I don't know, and you fall on the ground, you, you scuff your knee, you cut your arm, and you remove a layer of skin. What happens there? You take the skin off, you see the flesh, you see the inward part. Your protective layer is gone because the skin, it protects the body from all sorts of diseases, infections, getting dirt in those things. And again, surely that can be applied to our worship tonight. Because it teaches us that we possess no righteousness of our own. We don't come tonight with a covering of ourselves. We come tonight to worship him in humility. We come realizing that we are nothing, and that applies to me tonight as the preacher. It applies to all preachers. You know, yes, I might have been called into Bible college to preach God's Word, but that doesn't mean that I'm ever to elevate myself. It doesn't mean that I am to be boastful about myself, to think that I'm better than anybody else, because I'm not. You see, the preacher is never to boast of self, 
because the preacher's boast it is to be in Christ. And the preacher, his main duty, it is yes, to tell sinners about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's to point sinners away from himself and to point them to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what our worship is to be centered on. It's to be centered on Jesus Christ. You recall back in the book of Genesis, you think of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, they ate of the forbidden fruit. And what did they do? They realized they were naked, so they tried to hide it from the Lord. They tried to hide their shame, their sin. They covered themselves with the fig leaves. Maybe there's one here tonight and you're trying to do the same. Maybe you're trying to cover some sin tonight, some shame, your guilt, through your own righteousness, through your own covering here. Is that not foolish when you consider who the Lord is? Consider how the Lord, he sees everything. Adam and Eve, they were naked in the eyes of God, and you and I, we are naked before him. Even think of what Christina spoke about in the youth challenge this week, 1 Samuel chapter 16, the verse 7. Man looketh on the outward, outward appearance, but the Lord looketh upon the heart. He sees everything. And yet in his mercy, God provided Adam and Eve with a covering. And again, he has provided us with a covering by where we can approach him tonight. In verse 8 here, we have the head, we have the fat. You think of your head tonight, it's outward. You think of the fat, you think of the midriff, it's under the skin. We all have a little layer around the midriff at times. We see here that what is inward is manifest itself outward. Verse 9 speaks about the legs, it speaks about the inwards, the intestines. Again, we have the outward with the inward here. And they both were washed. They were washed to remove any outer defilement. They were washed to remove anything within that is unseen to the naked eye. And you and I tonight as Christians, we need that continual washing. We need to be continually cleansed from our sins. That needs to be our prayer every single day. To daily ask the Lord to search our hearts, to empty us of self and sin day and daily, and to wash us afresh in the Redeemer's blood. You see, Jesus Christ, he truly satisfied everything that God demanded here as the one-time sacrifice for sin. And his sacrifice here, it was a sweet savor unto God. Because only once those steps had been taken could the offering be made. And that shows us tonight, surely, that preparation was required. And again, we apply that to our worship tonight because we need to prepare ourselves in the place of worship. We need to make preparation to come into the presence of God. Have you done that tonight? Have you prepared your heart? Have you prepared your mind, your soul, everything tonight to get ready to meet with the Lord in prayer? And yet, what has all this got to do tonight with worship? Our point here is about worshiping in a structured way. Why is it important, therefore, to have structured worship? Well, we clearly see here that God had a structured way to approach God. And therefore, our worship being in keeping with the Bible, it should reflect this. And why is it so important tonight to stress that fact? Well, I stress it because there seems to be an ever-increasing apathy in some Christian circles against the way we worship, against the structured worship that the Bible has taught. See, some suggest that the worship in a structured way, it's to limit the Holy Ghost. They will tell you and I that our meetings would be more spirit-filled if we had less structure. We don't need structure. Do away with that. We just need the Holy Ghost tonight. And you know, I'm all for that. I agree tonight that we need the Holy Ghost. We need our meetings to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We need our preachers, our preaching to be spirit-filled. And then I wouldn't go to the extreme tonight of saying to do away with structured worship because it's biblical, and I'm going to show you that. See, the Old Testament, you take the Old Testament church, it existed in a time of polytheism. There were many gods of idolatry, of much man-made worship. And God, he called that worship an abomination. You think tonight of Exodus chapter 20, you think of the commandments. The first two commandments here, they're toward God. First commandment says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Second commandment says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, is in the earth beneath, that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. See, much of Old Testament worship, it broke these two commandments. It broke these two commandments because it was man-made, it was man-centered, it was off the Lord, and that's, that's not biblical. That's not what Christ here has appointed for our worship to be. See, the Lord's be at the center of it. Everything should flow toward Christ and away from man. 
The Bible in the Old Testament gives many examples of those who departed from God's appointed way of worship. You think of Nadab and Abihu. Leviticus chapter 10 tells us they offered strange fire before the Lord and they were killed for it. You think of Eli's two sons, Phinehas and Hophni. For Samuel chapter 5, they were slain in battle because they were doing all sorts of ungodly things in the place of worship. They corrupted the house of God. You think even of Uzzah there. He touched the Ark of the Covenant. He did that which was forbidden because only the priests were allowed to touch it and he was, he was killed for it. See, worship tonight is not a manner of human tradition. It's not what is popular or what the popular opinion is today. And sadly, that seems to be the way many churches are going because it's all about entertainment. It's all about getting people in and the Word of God is even very open at times. We think back to Christ's words in John 4, 24 and David spoke about these two weeks ago because we are to worship him in spirit and in truth. The New Testament did away with the Old Testament ceremony. Under that new covenant, Christ, the disciples, also they instituted a new way of worship, a much simpler way of worship. See, our worship here, as the Bible tells us, it ought to involve prayer and thanksgiving. You just have to read through Paul's epistles and you read how many of them begin. They begin by offering up prayer and thanksgiving unto the Lord. You think of 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and the verse 2, for example. That tells us to give thanks to God always for you all making mention of you in our prayers. So our worship tonight, it is to be prayer-filled. It is to offer up thanksgiving. We are to open the Word of God. The Scriptures are to be read. We are to preach the Word of God. 1 Timothy 4 verse 13 says, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Both hymns, psalms are to be sung in our services. Colossians chapter 3, 16, admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And the sacraments they are to be administered. The sacraments of baptism, the sacraments of the Lord's Supper, 1 Corinthians 11 tells us that, this do in remembrance of me. See, all of these things are to be done according to the command and to the example of Christ. And we tonight, we're in a free Presbyterian church, and I'm going to be a free Presbyterian minister, God willing. But I'm not standing here tonight trying to have a go to other churches because we aren't the perfect church. There's no perfect church on earth. And yet I believe the way we approach our worship, it is right, it's biblical, it's structured, it's how it should be. Our own confession says this about worship. It says the acceptable way of worshiping the true God is instituted by himself and so limited by his own revealed will that he may not be worshiped according to the imagination or devices of men or the suggestions of Satan under any visible representation or any other way not prescribed in the Holy Scriptures. So it's to be according to God how he has instituted it in the Bible. Not according to the traditions, not according to the thoughts of men, not according to Satan who would lead men that way. And the scripture doesn't give any details about the frequency of public worship. It doesn't tell us how long our sermon should be, whether it should be 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 25, 27 minutes, whatever you want to say. It doesn't tell us the time our services should be, the number of hymns, the number of verses we should sing. It doesn't tell us how long a service needs to be. See, for those things, you're just told to simply exercise good judgment. But we aren't to depart from God's instituted way of worship. See, that's the focus today in many churches. Is it's entertainment. What can I do to get people into the church? Maybe if I conform to this or to that, they'll get more people in. And they've done away with the Word of God. They've done away with Christ-centered worship. Many churches don't even read the Word of God. Truly, they've departed from God's way of worship. So that's really the first thing I wanted to tell you tonight. Don't worry, it's not going to be as long. Parts two and three, the first part I said was most of what I wanted to say tonight. But part two really is going to be about the sacrifice being a complete offering. And therefore, our worship must involve a complete offering up of ourselves. You see, the burnt offering here, I say that because it was a peculiar offering. It was the only one of the offerings in the book of Leviticus in which the whole of the animal, the entirety of the animal, minus the skin, was offered up unto the Lord. The other offerings, you learn about them, you, you read about them. And in those offerings, part of the animal was given to the, the priest, part of it was given to the offerer, but not with a burnt offering. Leviticus 1 verse 9 says, the priest shall burn all upon the altar. Deuteronomy 33 10 says, they shall teach Jacob thy judgments and Israel thy law. 
They shall put incense before thee and a whole burnt sacrifice upon thine altar. The whole of the burnt offering was to be offered up as a sacrifice unto God. And so what significance is that truth tonight for us in such an offering as we're considering here? Well, does it not show us that the one who offered the sacrifice was offering up everything to the Lord? We apply that to our worship and the principle is very simple. Because we should offer all that we have up to the Lord in worship. Nothing's to be held back. Nothing is to be kept to ourselves. We're never to give anything less than all that we have in worship. See, the Christian is told to surrender up his whole life to the Lord. And whenever you consider that, surely that's not too much to offer up to one. The one who offered up everything for us on the cross. You turn tonight to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, it's a familiar verse. You maybe don't even need to turn it up, it's so well, um, so well quoted. Romans 12 verse 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You see, the burnt offering here is symbolic of full and complete consecration unto the Lord. Everything is to be given up to the Lord. And the Christian here, he's exhorted to do that very thing also. You see, think of those words, a living sacrifice, what do they mean? Well, to be a living sacrifice, it was in contrast to the Levitical system. That's the point being made here. It wasn't to be propitiatory, but it was to be a sacrifice of praise unto the Lord. We're called here to be holy. Again, you think about the theme of Leviticus. You think about what the Christian is sanctified to do. They're to be set apart, they're to be sanctified, they're to be holy because I am holy. That's what Scripture tells us. And believers here, they're told to live like priests. They are to continue to present their whole lives to God for His pleasure. See, our worship, our worship to God is to be filled with praise. It's to be done in a sanctified manner. It's to be done in an acceptable manner to God. And therefore, it must come through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is to be a reasonable service. And simply, that means it's to be befitting. It's to be proper. You see, worship done in obedience to and for the glory of God, that will glorify Him. You think tonight to Genesis chapter 22. You think there as Abraham brought up his son Isaac to Mount Moriah. Abraham was told to offer up his son there as a burnt offering. I see many parents here tonight. I'm a parent myself. And to us, our children very often are everything. They're our all. And I'm sure that Abraham loved Isaac very much. And did you read that Abraham was still willing to offer up his son unto the Lord. Now we know God, of course, provided the ram there that was caught in the thicket to be act as a substitute. That substitute of the, of the ram points us to Christ who would be that substitute for our sins. See, Christ himself, again, he fully submitted to the will of the Father. He said, not my will, but thine, Lord. See, whenever the cross was before him, he didn't bulk at it. He didn't have second thoughts. He didn't say, I'm not, not sure about that. But he gave his all for us. You turn for a moment back to Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12 and the verse 33. Mark 12, 33. It's amazing sometimes. You, you read a verse and you've read it before and you see something new. See, Mark 12, 33 gives instruction for the Christian tonight. It says we are to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the soul, with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself. It is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. In other words here, the Christian is to love the Lord with everything, their heart, their understanding, their soul, their strength, or to love their neighbor. Because that's more pleasing. That here is more acceptable than all of the burnt offerings, all of the rituals in the Old Testament. That's what it's telling us here. You see, those here that was being addressed, those that Christ was addressing here, they were the Pharisees, they were involved in all religious ceremony, religious zealots, so much on the outward. They placed their emphasis on religious ceremonies, on the ceremonial system. They neglected the moral law. They neglected to love their neighbor. Hosea chapter 6 and the verse 6 teaches us that the Lord desired mercy. He desired mercy and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. See, to know Christ, to know who Christ is, to love the Lord in our worship, 
to give our all to ourselves and the Lord in our worship. That's what the Lord wants from us tonight. To give our everything unto Him because that is the most acceptable thing to Him. There's one final thing I want to leave with you very briefly. You see, the sacrifice, it glorified God. The sacrifice, it pointed to Jesus Christ. And therefore, our worship, it should do the same. See, what did we say last week was the purpose of the system here, the sacrificial system? It was to remind us of the characteristics of God, who God is. It was to remind us that God is to be approached in His appointed way. Most of all, it was to remind us and to point toward the coming of a Redeemer, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. See, these various sacrifices, they never could, never were intended to take away sin. Hebrews 10, 4, for it was not possible for the blood of bulls and of goats to take away sin. Because the sacrifices were imperfect. They were a picture, they were a type of the one Jesus Christ who would come and offer himself up once for sin. It says, but this man offered, he had offered up one sin forever. One sacrifice for sins forever. He sat down on the right hand of God. But you listen to what it says here in verse 14 of Hebrews 10. It says, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. You and I today who are saved, who are daily sanctified by the Lord, one day we will be perfected. One day we will undergo our, our final glorification because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done on the cross. And if we fail to look past the animal sacrifices, if we fail to understand their meaning tonight, we fail to understand the purpose of the offering here, the burnt offering. See, what is the purpose of the burnt offering tonight? It is offered up to glorify God. Our worship is to glorify God. And what does the burnt offering therefore teach us tonight? It teaches us that we have obtained full acceptance with Jesus Christ. And every sacrifice that points to Christ, it points to his perfect work. And therefore our worship, it must reflect us, the hymns we sing, the prayers we offer, the preaching of God's word, all must be toward Christ. All must lead us to Christ. And all must be done for the glory of God. And we no longer need the sacrificial system. Animal sacrifices, they're no more. And yet how we serve the Lord, how we live our lives for the Lord, how we worship Him, well, the Bible calls that a sacrifice. And I leave you with the words of Hebrews 13, and verses 15 and 16. Because it says there, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. See, the need for sacrifice didn't cease. But the definition of the sacrifice, it's changed. So no longer were the animals needed because the believer today can offer up praise to him with their lips, that's what it tells us there. We are to communicate the change in our lives to others. We are to do good works, good works that follow our salvation. And those good works here, they are called sacrifices that God is well pleased with. And my challenge to you tonight, based upon those words, is this as we close. What are you doing for the Lord today? Are you giving everything that you have in your service to the Lord? Am I doing that? Could I be doing more? Are you doing as is exhorted there? Are you continually presenting your bodies as that one-time living sacrifice for sin? Are you doing what Christ has exhorted us to do in Romans 12? To be a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. We're here tonight to pray. What better way to pray tonight than to praise Him? And to thank him for the grace that has triumphed in our lives. We'll come back to God willing the next offering whenever I'm next back. My time's gone, but I trust that we'll get to the meat offering at some point. I trust that what we've done over the past two weeks in looking at the burnt offering, it's been at least thought invoking. It's got you to think about these sacrifices again. It's changed your opinions about Leviticus. It's not a book about sacrifices and about rituals, but it's all about Christ. And most of all, we will take what we've learned, what I, I'll take what I've learned, you've learned, and we'll think about our approach to worship now. Every time we come into God's house, every time we meet Him in prayer, we have our family altars, 
every time we come on a Sunday, every time we approach Him in worship, may we remember and may we think about our approach. May we think about how we worship the Lord. May it be done with the right heart. May it be done with the right attitude. May it be glorifying to God. And may it point toward the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to come to our time of prayer, but just before we do that, we're going to sing our second hymn. It's the hymn number 20. The hymn 20, we praise thee, we bless thee, our Saviour divine. All power and dominion forever be thine. We sing of thy mercy with joyful acclaim, for thou hast redeemed us. All praise to thy name. Again, we'll get our introduction, and we'll stand to change our positions, please. Let's stand to sing. Come now to your time of prayer here in the building, and therefore we want to say good night to your online viewers. And we thank thee uh, for joining with us. And we trust even now in your own homes that you'll have that time of prayer and you'll come and you'll meet with the Lord in that way of worship. So good night, and we see you again very soon. <laughs>